My next guest is going to be fighting next Saturday at UFC 288, taking on Matt Favola. It is Drew Dober back here on the program. Drew, how are you, man? Fantastic. I got a, a fight scheduled. We're getting close, and so I feel pretty enthusiastic. Yeah, and you must have been pretty happy getting to fight Matt. Uh, obviously, someone who's uh, you know is going to stand and trade with you. Looks like a fight of the night potential. When you heard his name, did that excite you a bit? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, props to Matt for you know accepting the fight. Uh, man, it, it's so hard for me to find fights apparently, but uh, Matt accepted in, a, in an appropriate uh, time slot. So I'm, I'm super, super excited for this one. What happened with Jalen Turner? I thought that fight was going to happen. And now Jalen's fighting Dan Hooker in July. Was it that he wanted to fight later? Like, like why, why didn't that fight happen? I, I, that seemed like a slam dunk. Yeah, no, I, I was looking at fighting in April. Mm. Um, and, uh, apparently that just didn't work out for his schedule, which I understand. And then now I got scheduled to fight against Matt and Jalen's really enthusiastic about fighting this, uh, uh Dan Hooker. Mm. So man, it's going to happen eventually. Just uh, unfortunately not anytime soon. Did you think at this stage in your UFC career, being a vet, like you are, you'd still have issues with fighters, not, you know, wanting to fight you and things like that. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, I, I thought it would get easier as you moved up in the rankings, but it, it seems to get harder. Uh, man, uh, these ranked opponents are, are playing hard to get. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I'm not above fighting anyone. You know, Matt Frivola is unranked, but mm. he is super talented and he has a win over uh, Jalen Turner. So, you know, I'm, I'm open to prove myself against anyone. Yeah, and I think stylistically, like I was saying there, striker versus striker. I mean, you're, you're, you're good at everything, but uh, how are you looking at this one stylistically? Am I missing anything here, Drew? Uh, you know, I think uh, Matt Favola, like, he comes in and he swings heavy and uh, he takes risks. But he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, you know, he can definitely wrestle. I think he's an overall uh, complete martial artist. So I don't know kind of Matt is going to show up for this fight. Hmm. So I am uh, ready for anything. If he wants to kind of try to punch me in the mouth, I'm ready. But, you know, he could come in and try to take me down, put me on my back. And we've been training for that as well. And speaking of training, I saw you were in Vegas training a bit at Extreme Couture. I believe it was there, the PI anyways. Uh, tell me a bit about that and how long you trained out there. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, went out there to kind of do some uh, cross training. I like getting different looks. I, I like when strangers try to beat me up and they show me uh, some new things. So I spent a week out there, obviously, at the PI, which is, you know, such a great uh, uh, institute. Uh, but Extreme Couture has got some super talented and respectful guys. And, uh, yeah, I just love cross training. And, uh, you know, no, it doesn't hurt being in Vegas as well. How did that get set up with you training at Extreme? Did you message someone? Did you know someone there? Tell me how that all came together. Yeah, um, uh, Eric, the, the head Nixon. coach, yeah. uh, really close with my uh, my head coach, uh, Elliot Marshall. So um, we have a good uh, connection and relationship between them guys. And uh, man, the, the partners are pretty talented out there. And so uh, when I'm cross training, Extreme Couture is uh, where I'm going to be at. Who did you get to work with over there? Uh, man, everyone from mm. uh, uh, Patchy Mix, who just won the, the Grand Prix, title. Yeah. to uh, um, Chris Curtis, who is training for Kelvin Gastelum. Uh, man, uh, just a ton of talented guys, man. The list goes on. I felt like every round was somebody different, someone new and, uh, man, they really love punch me in the mouth. And then at back at home base at elevation fight team, same guys like Gaethje, like who, who you've mainly had a chance to work with that elevation. Um, yeah. So, uh, I've been walking, uh, working diligently with, uh, Archie Colgan. Oh, uh, nice. Bellator. Bellator. Yeah. I know him. I actually was at his fight. He fought in Tacoma, Washington last year. I was at that fight. Uh, he's very talented guy. Sorry to interrupt. Super talented, you know, tough yeah. wrestler, uh, very enthusiastic, but, uh, as always, I'm working with, uh, Justin Gaethje, uh, Neil Magny, uh, you know, some up and comers, uh, up here, uh, locally at team elevation. The room is packed and full. So, like I said, man, I'm getting different looks from different uh, people. Um, I wouldn't say I invest too much of my time with any one person. I like getting uh, all the looks. Yeah. Uh, who are some up-and-comers you work with? I always like hearing the names that we're going to be hearing soon. You know, guys on Contender Series, LFA. Name me like an up-and-comer or two that you get a chance to work with. Um, you know, Caleb Crum, uh, a, a kind of a, a regional pro. Uh, see here, we got... Uh, Unfortunately, I was able to work with my buddy, Austin Hubbard. He was on The Ultimate Fighter. That's right. Uh, man, you got put me on the spot. And, no, uh, no worries. I actually know Caleb. I interviewed him. Uh, he fought for Aries FC on the last event, I think, right? So I I, I got to speak to him. Really interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Logan Paxton, uh, an up-and-comer. Uh, worked really well with him. Uh, Ryan Charlie Boy, uh, I think LFA. 
Oh man. Good enough. Good enough for me. I just wanted to get a few names there. I don't want to put you on the spot here. Your, 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 uh, your job's not to do roll call. It's to punch people in the face. That's my job. Right. So got to figure it out. I uh, just, one thing you mentioned there with Archie, like I know Archie trains a lot with like Grant Neal and those guys. Does he cross train with you guys or is he part of your team? I was curious about that. Yeah. So the beautiful thing about team elevation is where you have this open format, uh, mm-hmm. uh, with our team. So, you know, with, with Onyx, uh, pound for pound Easton's high altitude, uh, you know, uh, Genesis, like we're just a, a conglomerate of the best gyms in Colorado, excluding factory X, mm-hmm. you know? And so, uh, for an hour and a half a day, we all come together and we, uh, we work with each other, but then we also, uh, supplement our training at uh, various other gyms. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a very open and, and movable format to where we can work with, uh, Justin Gaethje and Usman up at Genesis pound for pound, uh, uh, Onyx, sorry, my fault. And then, mm. yeah, just all over the place. And so it's a very, uh, uh, fighter focused format. Good. That's cool. Uh, how's the weight cut going? Obviously we're a week away. You always make weight, but I got to ask anyways. Smooth, actually smooth. Yeah. Uh, I think we're in my later age, we're finally figuring out the, uh, the, the, the prime spot. So my, uh, my cut with Bobby for Bobby green, um, uh, was, was beautiful. And I wanted to do a back to back smooth weight cut and, uh, things are, are dialed in. That's great. Um, I know you're going to be a dad coming up here soon. Uh, you know, we hear of dad Cerrone. I know the, the baby hasn't come yet, but do you feel different going into this fight, knowing what, what's going to be coming up soon? Um, yeah, slightly. It's, uh, just the, the different, uh, enthusiasm, you know, like whether I'm tired, hungry, fatigued, overtrained or whatever, man, these excuses are, are not no longer as heavy as they were because now I'm fighting for another mouth other than mine. So, uh, man, it's just uh, the motivation, the excitement. And, and on top of that, man, it's just uh, the, the beautiful thing of everything outside of, you know, the gym. You know, it's uh, the excitement of becoming a dad and the, uh, the realization that things are about to change and uh, change for the, the good. When's the due date? June 2nd. Oh, wow. Which is why I was dying to get a fight in April because, uh, man, I don't want to train for close. a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's good. Awesome. Well, uh, congrats on that. That's going to be uh, obviously a big life-changing moment here. But back to your fight, May 6th. How do you see this one playing out? How's this one going down? Man, we're going to play some punch face. And uh, I know he's ready for the full 15. I'll be ready for the full 15. I think it really it's uh, who has more power and accuracy and who's the, the better polish. And so, man, I see a stand-up war. I think it's either going to be fight of the night or performance of the night, depending on uh, how hard Matt's been training. So take me through the timing of this, right? Like you just mentioned, baby's going to be born in June. I imagine you want to take some time off, be a dad, all that good stuff. Are you kind of looking at, you know, maybe the fall, winter, uh, the fight after this? Not looking past May 6th, but... I'm sure you're kind of thinking ahead here. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking ahead. Uh, you know, when the baby comes out, you know, I got my uh, my scheduled paternity leave to where, uh, you know, I got to figure out this routine. It's my first child. So <laughs> we got to we got to figure out this juggling act between my wife and I. Uh, but once you get that going and uh, we're back in the gym, I mean, staying active is is a prime thing for me. Okay. Uh, so I think in that time, we're going to see, you know, what ranked fighters are going to uh, be available. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready for the top 10. I'm ready for the top five. I'm ready for top top guys, fantastic fights. Uh, so we'll see, you know, what Dustin Poirier is doing, you know, the winner of, uh, Connor and Chandler. I, I love that. Uh, hopefully if Aziv doesn't get matched up and maybe him and I can make some beautiful violence. Oh, that'd be an amazing fight. Yeah. But, uh, as of now, I'm, we're, we're looking at, um, uh, September or October, like getting okay. back in the cage by fall. Okay. That, that, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And by the way, need any parenting tips? I got two kids. I think the biggest thing you need to figure out with your wife is, are you a morning or night person? Because that'll determine how you want to do the shifts. I'm a morning guy. So I would get up early and take the baby like early in the morning. My wife would do kind of the night shift. So I don't know. I don't know how you guys want to do it, but that, that would yeah. be my recommendation. I, I feel like it's not so much the sleep, but more so the, the work schedule. Right. Uh, my wife has the, the grown up adult job. You know, I got my sugar mama. So she, oh, cool. her okay. job priority and then i gotta watch the kid and train around it so yeah you know i think we gotta figure that out you know what works best for her and then i gotta supplement that you know uh here in canada a maternity leave for women is like you get like a full year off it's crazy like paid too yeah oh that's beautiful yeah uh and we we got lucky uh you know even in the united states is unheard of my wife got 12 weeks yeah, uh, no, I know it's a bit different over there. So that that's uh, that that's interesting. We'll have to kind of navigate through that. And uh, if you remember last July, I saw you on the red carpet at uh, International Fight Week. Are you going to be doing any more stuff like that? Or because of the dad stuff, you're kind of uh, taking a break from that? 
Oh, yeah. So uh, I was brushed on the table whether I wanted to come out to International Fight Week. My wife said only if I'm getting paid. So uh, UFC is paying me. I will be out there for sure. So There you go. I'll see her- you on the red carpet again. That'll be good. That's perfect. Definitely. Um, and, and just remind me as well, how many more fights do you have left on your contract? Uh, so we're going to renegotiate after this one. Nice. Okay, so big fight then. Because obviously you go out there, you get another nice highlight reel win. You got a lot of leverage, right? Definitely, definitely. So uh, hopefully staying longer in the, the UFC uh, realm and then getting paid more to do it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, one thing I don't think I've asked you before, and I just noticed it before we hopped on this interview. Um, have you talked to Tapology about changing your profile photo? Because the photo they have of you is when you fought in Strike Force. Did you know this? <laughs> what, eons ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like has much changed. I feel like I have. I was gonna, no, I was just gonna say you. I don't know what it is you're, you're the, like, what you're taking or whatever. But like, you don't look much different. I just figured they'd probably want something updated since Strike Force hasn't really been a thing for a while, right? I mean, I mean, we'll keep it. You know, keep me looking young. But uh, yeah, I feel like this bruising and punch in the mouth is my version of Botox. Yeah, well, could be yeah that, and also you know it's like, and I'm sure your wife tells you this. You know, men we we age better, you know, as as we move along, right? So it's uh, you might want that updated profile photo just to keep with the times, right? Yeah, who knows? I mean, someone's got to talk, got to tap out. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's okay. also a fun reminder of like where we started. That's true. Okay, yeah, no silver lining there. And uh, last question before we get out of here: Are you getting in any Netflix, watching anything on TV uh, in between uh, training sessions and stuff? Man, I've, I've been jamming out at Married at First Sight okay uh, on netflix but yeah man just just crap trash reality show it's just- i'm the same way i i need I, you know what like it's like i i don't know about you but like when it gets to like nighttime and stuff i need my brain to like shut off so like trashy reality television is the way to go i'm with you there so right 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 and then uh yeah man we i think we're on a, a standstill as far as uh tv shows go but i did pick up the uh, the books uh, series uh the king killer okay series so man i've been reading some books if i'm not watching trash television there you go smart guy uh drew thanks so much for doing this we're looking forward to the fight ufc 288 if there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here any sponsors any social media i'll give you the last word yeah yeah. coffee bros uh man just sent me a a espresso machine my body runs on adrenaline and caffeine so coffee bros hooked it up uh man i love you guys